Hey, welcome to our morning cup of joe. You know, I really like this t-shirt, but I am also bothered by it. Why? Because of the ridiculous way that the chemical equipment is displayed. No one would ever put together flasks in this way. But this is not the only place we see this. Bill Nye, the science guy, who I actually really like, when he was on the Disney Channel, there was a promo picture, and this is it. Look at the way that the equipment is put together. No one would ever link a funnel, filtration funnel, to a flask in this way. This is total nonsense. And you would think that Disney would have some scientific consultants who could tell them how to put together some chemical equipment properly. It's not any less interesting if you do it right. Well, talking about putting things together properly, molecular structure. Now that's where putting atoms together properly really matters. Let me give you an example. What I have here is a partial molecular structure of a molecule called transpolyisoprene. And this is found in the sap of a tree that grows in Asia, and it's called gutta percha. Very, very interesting. It is chemically similar to natural rubber. And if I show you the partial molecular structure of natural rubber, uh, I think on first glance you, you don't see any difference. But there's a significant difference. In one case, we have this hydrogen and methyl group on opposite sides of that double bond. In the other case, they're on the same side. That makes a huge difference in molecular properties. In the case of, of uh, gutta percha, uh, the sap can be heated up, and when it cools down, it will retain the shape into which it has been formed. That's not the case for natural rubber. Gutta percha found numerous uses in the latter part of the 1800s. It was the material that made possible the transatlantic cable because of its insulating properties. It was also used in all kinds of telegraph uh, equipment. But there's another interesting use that I want to tell you about that takes us back to the late 1800s, and that is all about golf balls. Golf balls. Yeah, well, this, of course, is just a picture of a golf ball, which is not the same as having a, a, a real one. But I have my little attache case here, and I'm going to put the picture of the golf ball in here. We will close up this uh, attache case, make sure that it's properly locked. And what is really interesting now is that what we have here is a real golf ball having come out of this case where it couldn't possibly have been hidden, right? Well, the interesting thing about this golf ball is that in the late 1800s, it was filled with gutta percha, and that revolutionized the golf game. Before that, it was packed with feathers, and the ball did not fly very far. But as soon as they replaced the feathers with gutta percha, you could hit the ball and it would fly a significant distance further. Today, of course, there are much better materials that are used in order to uh, fill the golf ball. But uh, interestingly enough, there are collectors who would love to get their hands on the old gutta percha golf balls. Some of them have sold, believe it or not, for as much as $28,000. We still use gutta percha today, at least dentists do. If you've ever had the pleasure of getting a root canal, they, of course, drill out the root, and they have to replace it with something. And that something is gutta percha, because when heated, it will totally fill the space that is available, and when it cools down, it will harden. And uh, it is totally inert material biologically. So this has revolutionized the dental business the same way that in the late 1800s, gutta percha revolutionized golf. And uh, now you know the way, I guess, uh, the golf ball bounces. See you next time.